Okay, so welcome back. Um, this is back to the CD collection that I've been going through and today I'm going to look at the blues. I haven't got a huge number of blues albums. I've just got a few, but I've got, I think, some, some quite important blues musicians. So I'm going to start off with uh, probably the most important blues musician, arguably um, the most influential, is Robert Johnson. And Robert Johnson, uh, this one is a complete recording, so sometimes you'll get uh, two tracks one after another, which is an interesting approach, uh, but they're quite different as they play through. If you're interested in the blues, you need to know about Robert Johnson, so go and check out Robert Johnson. Another one is Huddy Ledbetter, otherwise known as uh, Lead Belly. And this is from a definitive collection box set that I have. And it's three CDs. So the uh, the Robert Johnson one was a two CD set in a jewel case, double jewel case. That's a thick one. Whereas this is in a nice box set. And you can look around for different kinds of box sets that come out. Uh, and that's quite a nice one. And within it, there's a booklet. And then, of course, you get three CDs of Lead Belly's work. And Lead Belly's a little different. Um, Robert Johnson's kind of got a seriousness to his work, whereas Lead Belly, there's a bit of humor comes through. Uh, it's been a while since I listened to the Robert Johnson one, to be honest, so uh, there might be some humorous storytelling in there as well. But it's kind of got an earnest quality to it. I think it's because being a lone guitarist, whereas Lead Belly has accompaniment. He also plays different instruments, or he has other instruments involved. Uh, as you could see by the cover, uh, it's him on guitar. But there's also piano, there's, he does play the accordion, um, there is harmonica as well, and there's other musicians, um, so there's other singing, whereas Robert Johnson's just a lone singer. So, you know, there is difference between how the music plays out in blues, of course, uh, Lead Belly, I would say being uh, more upbeat, if one could say that about the blues, because obviously the blues, as the name suggests, is usually kind of... Um, well, not melancholic, just self-reflective storytelling. And of course, a lot of these blues musicians being of African-American descent came from um, the, the, the history of slavery and their, you know, their parents and grandparents that they had a direct connection with were slaves in their lifetime. So they had a lot to sing about in terms of that part of their experience from the South. Uh, Lead Belly, who I think he's from Louisiana. Uh, so obviously a lot of them are southern. A few did move up north, so I'll point out as I can. And when I remember, uh, when they moved more north into, say, Chicago, and then some, of course, went into New York later on. But a lot of it stems from the south. Um, closely tied to country music, of course. Um, Three Chords and the Truth is something that's often used to describe country music, but also it can be used to describe uh, blues music. It's often just that, that way of storytelling where it's just somebody's truth in terms of their life experience. Uh, and, and stories that they tell, because there are standards, a little like jazz standards, there's standards and blues that are retold in different ways. So yeah, it's storytelling at its finest. Uh, and that's why I'm interested in the blues and I took some interest to get a few albums. Another very important blues player is Charlie Patton uh, of mixed race descent. So he sort of has got um, Anglo and uh, Native American heritage too. So that's definitive. Um, Charlie Patton, and there is some discussion of his his uh, mixed heritage, um, which made things difficult for him, obviously, uh, in the South. And he's another Delta Blues man. Uh, so this one, again, this box comes with a booklet, and there's three CDs with this one. And these are sort of like the classic old sort of vinyl covers. So blues albums uh, in the vinyl format are very rare and very collectible especially of these kinds of musicians of the highest sort of caliber. Um, but these CDs come in these nice sort of replica sleeves that would have been quite nice um, artifacts in and of themselves. Now, how did I really get to the blues? Uh, obviously, everyone knows of the blues. Not everyone dives in and buys blues music. I came to the blues via this musician, Big Bill Brunzi. And he's a Chicago blues man. And Big Bill Brunsey was mentioned by Paul McCartney in the, what was it called? It was the Beatles Anthology. Uh, it's a series that came out in the 90s. And there were three episodes. There's certainly three CDs, uh, Beatles Anthology CDs, that I highly recommend. 
that came out where there were reconfigurations of Beatles music. And when they were talking to um, Paul about his influences, he mentioned someone named Big Bill Brunsey. And I'd never heard of him before. If he'd mentioned Robert Johnson, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I've heard of Robert Johnson. I'd heard of Charlie Patton. I'd heard of Lead Belly, but not Big Bill Brunsey, which is where I actually started with blues. And he's a humorous storyteller. Uh, so a lot of his, um, his music, he's a guitarist. Uh, so it is, it is him and guitar. Uh, but he just tells these really, really funny stories, um, but also some, you know, serious commentary as well, and blues standards in there. This is actually a Japanese um, CD, so I'm just showing you some of the, the Japanese writing on the inside. I got this by chance. Uh, it's not something I imported. It actually, it appears to be very rare. So I feel very lucky to have this, um, and it introduced me to him, so I got another album, and this is probably the one I'd recommend because I am a fan of Big Bill Brunsey and I only have a couple, but Trouble in Mind is certainly worth getting. So this is a, a standard. It's not a Japanese import or anything like that. Uh, it's your usual kind of digipack. Uh, now, I haven't got too many more. I do want to point out Albert King. Albert King is the only king. Uh, there's three kings. There's Freddie King, B.B. King, which many people have heard of B.B. King, and Albert King, and I, I went quite deep into Albert King. Uh, and again, he's a great, now he has accompaniment. Uh, this is recorded live at the Fulmer Auditorium on a Wednesday night, San Francisco. I uh, don't know if it gives a date there, not easily. Uh, but yeah, and then there's a Thursday night recording. So this is sort of like a companion one. 24-bit remastered, these are quite nice additions. Uh, worth checking out. Albert King, I really like Albert King. Uh, and then this is the album to get. So this is another highly recommended album. Born Under a Bad Sign, that's a hilarious track. Um, and that's probably his most famous track. But this is a really good overall album. If you got one blues album, this would be it. And I've got um, Sonny Boy Williamson. And this is a compilation, it's his best. I'm not always interested in getting compilations by musicians, but sometimes um, with Musical genres like uh, the blues, it's really best to look for either complete collections, definitive collections like I've shown you with those box sets, or in this case, just getting the best of. Sometimes they did make whole albums, but often it's really just a case of what was brought together by somebody who was into the blues and wanted to put into one album. Uh, he's a harmonica player, so this is quite interesting because it is a unique sort of harmonica sound, um, and that's well worth checking out. Um, I'm going to also bring up T-Bone Walker. That's another one of those sort of fat pack, I think they're fat boys or something. They're, they're sort of like these jewel cases that are double jewel cases. So two, two CD set. Uh, it's another example of, you know, complete. Yeah, it's, it's actually on the Imperial label that he was on, complete Imperial recordings. Uh, I just picked that up. Um, as the image suggests, it's, it's more rocky. It's definitely got that little Richard kind of quality to it. Um, upbeat and pretty um, pretty boisterous so different different way of doing the blues but definitely got that blues sound here's an interesting one this is a box set of Fleetwood Mac and uh, most people will know Fleetwood Mac as being um, of that sort of stadium rock era it was the 70s when they really took off with the album like Rumours um, so some of these albums you may or may not recognize this is a compilation of a bunch of their earlier albums. Um, one of the famous tracks on one of these is um, Albatross, which was a big hit for them. Um, but it's this is why oh, there's an original Fleetwood Mac album. So this is really early Fleetwood Mac. But why I'm bringing this one out is because of this. These amazing blues albums that they created, Chicago blues albums that they created with um, a bunch of prominent blues musicians of the time. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, this is a fantastic sort of blues album, real traditional blues album, there's two of them. And they came in this box set and that's the reason for getting that box set. Sorry, I'm shaking a bit, I was trying to hold it delicately. Uh, it was my left hand wasn't so good at holding it. And um, I actually have some more CDs and I've sort of forgotten to bring them over. So I'm just gonna rush off and get those. Okay, so, um, I just got some jewel case CDs. That's why they were sitting somewhere else. 
And some of you may have heard of Muddy Waters. So Muddy Waters is another one of those influential blues men from um, well, more of the 50s and 60s. And Folk Singer, this was an album that was recommended to me. So uh, I did get it. Uh, it's a trio that he's playing with. So there's um, guitar and bass, stand-up bass in there. And it's a fantastic album. This one's uh, digitally remastered. And it's sort of, you know, obviously folk, country, blues are intertwined. So it's kind of nice that he's sort of labeled that album Folk Singer. But it's essentially a blues album uh, that he's uh, produced there but it's got a folky quality to it. And it's really quite rhythmic and, and beautiful, and the guitar playing is very clear. I think it's because it has been digitally remastered, it's just the, the guitar playing cuts through. Beautiful, clear guitar playing, which is a bit like B.B. King. He's got that quality in blues guitar playing. So, you know, everyone strums a little bit differently in some of these musicians. Uh, certainly it can be the recording, but it's often the way they play can have a really clear, articulate, um, guitar sound. And then another one is Howlin' Wolf. Now Howlin' Wolf is quite big in the um, the blues world, but I don't have much of his stuff. This is just one that I got um, that I quite like. You can see sort of the company that he's keeping there. Um, it's a little bit more contemporary. It's This is sort of 1989, so it's not sort of early Howlin' Wolf, but it's some London sessions, so he's playing with some British musicians. They did have a huge influence on um, British musicians. And finally, I'll end with um, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee. Um, now, I'm just trying to think if they both play harmonica, uh, but they certainly got harmonica in there as being their, what is it, harmonica and guitar. So it's going to be harmonica and guitar sound. So it's always good to get a variation of blues playing. So that's my blues collection. Uh, it's not huge, but uh, it's not one that's growing either unless something stands out to me because I've got a lot of other contemporary musicians who are clearly influenced by the blues. Uh, and, you know, that's sort of where I hear a lot of the blues is through them. Uh, alternative country, there's a lot of blues influence. And also people like Tom Waits, you know, there's a, definitely a blues rock influence. Uh, even someone like Bruce Springsteen, you can sort of hear the blues come through. Beatles, Ghost Without Saints, Rolling Stones, Cream, Eric Clapton. I haven't got much Eric Clapton other than in Cream, I believe. So yeah, that's that's my blues collection. So thanks for watching again. Uh, please do hit subscribe and like and all that carry on. Uh, it really does help. And uh, we'll see you next time.